Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Greg Brown from The Foundry, and what I'm gonna be showing you today is a very small snippet of the awesome tools that you can find in Moto, specifically our sculpting, modeling, and topology tools. So now I'm gonna hop on this uh, Wacom, and I'm gonna show you how great this tool set is. First off, this character you see here, he was modeled and sculpted in Moto in connection with ZBrush. If you take a look at the topology for the character, very low resolution, very precise, and this is achieved because of a few features inside of Moto, specifically our excellent modeling tool set and also the ability to transfer details back and forth with ZBrush via vector displacements. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my wireframe again really quickly and show you some of the advantages of doing detailing inside of Moto 801. So I'm going to go ahead and come on over here, make my inactive meshes shaded exactly the same as my active meshes. And you'll notice I have this whole series of secondary meshes in here. They're actually being used to produce nice tight details such as these clothing seams, hair, cuffs, boots. Things that are actually very hard to find the detail in when you have to subdivide a, a mesh up to like 60, 80, 100 million polygons where the detail can be achieved in Moto very efficiently using our topology tool set in connection with our modeling tools. So let me show you some of the great reasons why you can use this stuff inside of Moto. First off, this character is entirely multi-resolution. Let me come over and grab some of my sculpting tools. Go ahead and pull out my brush. Let's uh, go ahead and modify the falloff of that brush. Stroke once to establish my stroke mesh. And as I sculpt away on the surface, you can see it's smooth, clean, even, five million polygons inside a full feature 3D modeling and animation package. And when I want to actually go in to do fine, crisp detailing, I can do this using our topology tools. So if I want to come on over to our dedicated topology layout, you can see right there, Underneath our topology layout, if I create a new mesh, that will set up my background mesh. And now all I have to do is use the variety of topology tools you see over here on the left-hand bar. The two I use the most and almost exclusively are the topology pen and the contour tool. And to draw out your first poly, this tool is basically a modeling tool combined with background constraints and all sorts of streamlining. So holding down the control key, left-clicking and dragging out, creates my first polygon attached to the surface and not even touching the keyboard at all, which is great on a Wacom tablet. I can go ahead and hover over a polygon or an edge or a vertex and automatically establish these selection groups and tweak and tune my geometry. Of course, one single polygon is not quite gonna cut it now, is it? So I need to add some geometry. Holding down the shift key will allow me to go ahead and drag out some extra geometry. Yanking on a vertex, get it nicely oriented, and pull out some more geometry as well. Now, you're not limited to just those simple operations. What if I wanted to pull out an entire loop? I can certainly do that as well. Control key will allow me to de delete. And if I drag one edge near another, it will snap right into place. And I absolutely love this. What if I want to slice through this geometry? Position it exactly the entire time it's maintaining its connection to the background mesh. And so it's a really nice and versatile experience working inside a Moto to develop your topology. You don't think about the technical components at all, you just make sure you have an attractive, clean mesh. Now, the next one I want to show you is the contour tool. The contour tool is less engineered to design specific topology like you find in the face or the torso, but more for predictable limb structures. So with the contour tool selected, all I do is left click and drag on out. You can see this establishes my first line. First one takes the longest to draw a contour over my surface. I can check out the orientation, decide, you know what, I want to project this slightly differently, tweak and tune it, and once that's established, it's quick and easy. Now all the modeling tools in Moto operate on a very similar principle that holding down the shift key will allow you to rerun the tool. And this allows me to quickly and easily map out where I want my spans located for my topology for the arm. And so, shift key again, right down there at the wrist. I know I want to pull that in a little bit closer. Let's take a look at it. Wow, that time I got really lucky, didn't I? I'm happy with the way that looks. But you know what, I'm not happy with that one. So I'm gonna undo it really quickly. Let's step back. Reorient, realign myself, shift key, pull that into place. And now let's get in down at the wrist and just tweak and tune this. And this is the thing, is that any sort of modeling or topology process is often very iterative. And you have to keep on making changes. And Moto makes this easy due to the flexibility of its architecture. 
So now let's go ahead and use the bridge tool in connection with that contour tool. All I have to do is click in the viewport, and there we go. It's drawn out my basic topology for me. I can left click and drag in the viewport to add more geometry, and it stays constrained. Come on down to the curves. I'm going to raise that up to 30, and now I have some nice tight geo attached to the arm that I can play around with. Now, I'm not really doing this to retopo. I'm doing this to add detail that I then can bake as a displacement map on top of my multi-resolution mesh. And this is a really flexible way of being able to add detail. I'm also going to get rid of this geometry over here because I just don't need it right now. And let's play around with some of the great selection attributes in Modo. So I want to create the cuff that's associated here. L for a loop, Shift plus the up arrow key to move back around those selections. Let's come back to that last final loop. I'm going to go ahead and use a fall off. Let's use a selection fall off right now. And let's use that in connection with a standard modeling tool, like the deform tool, or the, uh, the push tool right here. Click in the viewport, get this nice handle, and it's pushing out of the surface. What I really care about is the height right around the wrist. Get that hanging right above the surface, but I don't like how it's falling off into the background. So I can go ahead and tweak and tune the number of steps that we have here, and just get that so it falls off nicely into the background mesh. And now I have it in place, really happy with that. I'll switch to my edge selection mode, zoom in, double click on top of this edge. So we have a loop now in place. Let's use the edge extend tool now. No more fall off, so I'll turn that off. And let's also change action center to local. That way, whenever I, I turn on the manipulator, you see how it automatically aligns the normal direction of the surface. And I also want to turn on my background constraints. So background constraint, let's go with background constraint type of vector. That's like glue. I don't want this to slide around. I just want it to snap onto the background surface. R key for the scale tool. And now I can scale that object on in while holding down the control key and get it to snap to the background surface. R for the scale tool and yank this on down to snap to the background. You see I snapped directly to that surface. Now I can go ahead and switch my background constraint over to a type of point, which allows me to slide over the surface. But I want to do that right after I drop the tool. So point mode, Z for the edge extend tool again, click in the viewport, and now I can drag that geometry out while it stays constrained to the background surface. Switch back on over to the topology pen. Shift key to slice right through, to uh, add another little bevel right there. Now let me come back over to my items. Let's turn off our hero mesh. I want to switch to a new layout, which would just be the painting layout, so we can see this shaded. And now what I'm capable of doing is turning this into a sub-D item. Let's go ahead and come into edge component mode, select one edge after another, L for loop, vertex map, edge weight tool. Weight that edge at around 20%. I'm happy with that. And now let's come over to our mesh options, raise our subdivision level to, say, level 4. And now we have a nice soft bevel right there. So now this is all in place. Let's get rid of all our background constraints. And now I can even use some of the sculpting tools on top of these kind of hard edge details. So one of my favorite brushes, the flatten brush. I'll zoom right on in here, pull it out, play around with the fall off a little bit. And now I can flatten directly on top of the surface. Now it's not multi-res right now, it's a raw mesh. By turning on multi-res, I have multi-resolution sculpting tools that I can sculpt on top of this modeling with edge weights that I've already done. And if I decide that, you know what, that sucks, I hate it, I want to get rid of it, we also have this wonderful brush, the attenuate brush, which is basically an erase. So let's go ahead and increase the amount to approximately 100%. This allows me to drag over the surface and erase any of the details I just sculpted and still maintain the edge weighting that I just performed. And so that's the topology tool set or a small example of the topology tool set in Moto. Thanks so much for watching.